So we've told you about how large corporations and other financial interests are buying up whole neighborhoods with all cash offers, making it nearly impossible for normal people, especially first time home buyers, to buy in. Recently, a law was passed in California that gives people more time to match any corporate bid that's made at a foreclosure auction. One caveat here, the measure does not provide any financial assistance there. So senior investigative reporter for NPR California, author of Home Records, Aaron Glantz, he joins us now to discuss. Aaron, um, we've been long waiting your, your wisdom here and on what exactly is going on with the housing market. I mean, we've seen cash prices and more just skyrocket, making it so that regular people really can't compete in order to buy a home. What is this a result of? Well, we have an incredible situation right now where the Case Schiller Home Price Index is at its highest level ever. Housing prices have never been higher in American history, at least as long as they've been tracking it. And yet, at the same time, the economy itself is in the crapper, right? People don't have jobs. Um, people, uh, businesses are closing. So wh what could be going on here? Well, the good news is that there's a foreclosure moratorium. So people are not losing their homes. Uh, more good news, uh, interest rates are low. So capital is cheap. If you want to get financing, uh, it doesn't cost as much. So there is a lot of interest in buying and that's driving up prices. Uh, the problem that you alluded to is who can afford these high prices? And what we're seeing is speculators rushing to the front of the line, grabbing property with cash before families even have a chance to access the American dream. Mm -hmm. Can you break down some of the numbers on that? How much is that driving the skyrocketing home prices? And then what does it mean when you basically have, you know, the permanent capital class buying up entire neighborhoods and positioning themselves to be America's landlord? Well, let's talk about uh, the long arc of history here. In my book, Home Records, I write about what happened after the 2008 housing bust, where big private equity companies like Blackstone and Colony Capital, which was founded by Donald Trump's uh, best friend, Tom Barrett, bought up tens of thousands of homes all across America. And unlike in previous crises where people would come in and buy and flip, they bought and hold. And so even now that Blackstone as a private equity firm has exited the uh, corporate landlording space and turned their company invitation homes into just any other company on the stock market, yeah, and Aaron, I mean, one of the things that I, w I saw a lot of takes flying around about this at the time, people saying, hey, look, like if more people have access to housing, who cares who owns it? What would your, uh, what would your response to that be? Well, I mean, what we have here in California is a really aggressive debate about supply. Do we have a housing shortage? Do we need to loosen some of our development standards to allow more apartment buildings? Because we, we, we have really high prices. And what I have been saying is that separate from that very important debate about whether or not we have enough housing is who owns the housing that we do have. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's been happening during this pandemic is that because we have eviction moratoriums in place uh, where tenants cannot get kicked out, which is a good thing, but on the other hand, we have a real broken rent subsidy program to help people pay their uh, rent payments, that is having a huge effect on mom and pop landlords. And so what I'm really worried about coming out of this pandemic is that you will see families who maybe own their own home plus one other property get wiped out on their rental properties. And then these big corporate actors that you all are talking about coming in and buying up those houses, sometimes one at a time, sometimes one neighborhood at a time. And that means that we are going to lose our kind of uh, upper middle class wealth, you know, the American dream of, of buying your own home, but also, uh, you know, maybe buying one other property and passing that property on to your children, that is going to be foreclosed on. Um, and in fact, that's exactly what happened in the story that you mentioned at the outset that my colleagues at KQED did, where they looked at this house in Pinole, which is in the suburbs outside of San Francisco where this formerly homeless grandmother had been renting. Mm -hmm. And that home was lost to foreclosure by her landlord. 
her landlord was a family and they had had that home in the family for 30 years. And when they lost the foreclosure, the buyer was the speculator Wedgwood, which is a home flipper that has been just buying rapaciously over a hundred properties here in California during the pandemic. And, uh, you know, buying, flipping sometimes very, very fast, um, and uh, driving up the price uh, so that when when you come, it's already been through this uh, speculative churn. Yeah, and the reporting out there too is that um, these giant companies make terrible landlords, um, just like slumlords. You know, mold going untreated, pipes bursting, things not being fixed, things being dangerous. Except when it's a giant behemoth, you have even less recourse than if it's someone who's small time and someone who's local. Aaron, play this out for us, though. I mean, do prices just continue to go up and up? Is there a bubble that ultimately pops? What would that look like? Where does the federal government come in? How do you see this all playing out? Well, first, on the type of landlords that these companies are, I mean, like anyone else, there's good companies and bad companies. But what we see in the sector is with these large companies, similar to Amazon or any of the other firms that we're dealing with, there's a real uh, profit maximization uh, potential here uh, for them and uh, a lot of consulting going on and a lot of legal language. So if you live in one of these houses, you're going to end up with a lease that says if the plumbing breaks, you fix it. If the window breaks, you repair it. Uh, they're mm -hmm. pushing more and more responsibilities onto the tenant. They're also very, very aggressive in raising their prices. Aaron, thank you so much. Great to have you on this. Thanks, Aaron. A lot more rising for you after this.